I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. I'm located at 1020 Plain Street in Marshfield. It's the first building from Pembroke over the line into Marshfield on the left, just past the Cheryl Williams Paint and the uh, daycare center. Uh, I can be reached at uh, susan.c.peary, P I E R I, at gmail.com, and I'm at 781 834 6751. Thank you very much for letting me be back again. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the first order of business, the update from the Pembroke Emergency Management on these events and activities that occurred during the March 2nd storm. The Chiefs Board of Representatives and the update will present to the board. Good evening. Congratulations on your acting chairmanship. Thank you. Right. So, we have a heck of a storm. It's pretty bad. Uh, in my, I don't know how many years we've been doing emergency management, I think this was the worst one yet. Uh, our owners, 97% of the town is out. And because Pembroke sits at the end of all of the national grid feeders, we're the last towns because everybody to our east is never source. They can fix all upstream before they get it downstream. They have some major issues with some of their trunk lines coming in. We would we hit pretty bad. Uh, took several days to get our power back. I believe we lost 350 volt volts. And so there was a lot of, not restoration, but we were into a lot of reconstruction. And, and some of the places were out uh, off of 36 of the cranberry blocks, there's poles that went right through the middle of the bogs, and two of those broke. And some special equipment to get them back up. Those are major high voltage lines. Uh, all in all, the town got hit pretty bad. A lot of tree damage. Uh, I saw at least eight houses that had serious damage. Probably another 20 or 30 of them had significant damage. Lost a couple of cars. Uh, the fortunate thing is we didn't lose any lives. And although it took a while to get our power back on, uh, we're back. Um, well, Pembroke had hit extremely bad. Ernst Colony had hit pretty bad. Uh, Bryantville, we were the first ones to get our power on it. They first called whatever they went at. We're, uh, except for a couple houses down in uh, up a Woodbine. But, uh, <laughs> but it was the one that might have just waited. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and we were, uh, we, we opened up the library, and the library did a tremendous job. Uh, it's a warming station on Saturday. It was just packed. And then we left it open at night, and we ran a, uh, ran a shelter at night in the library. And we didn't have a lot of people, but we had people that had no power, uh, and they were afraid to go home. Yeah. The, the, right, the right kind of people stayed with them, the people who had trouble coming for themselves. So. And, uh, the Department of Public Works, tremendous job. I mean, it, it, the work that they did out there in the streets, and, uh, and the conditions were, were pretty bad. I mean, it was uh, a sustained wind. Of, of 45 miles an hour and then gusts on top of that. And, uh, if you look at some of the trees that have snapped off at 25 feet in the air, just twisted, uh, it, it's be outstanding and I have to tell you, it's, it's a really eerie feeling. But uh, the town came together well, the Pima people came together, they, they took care of that whole shelter thing, we didn't have to worry about, uh, they let uh, Chief Hill and I do what we had to do out on the streets. The National Grid was on the ground with us since the second day of the storm. Had an escort driving around, putting all the damage, getting right to the wall to get it uh, to get it fixed. Any dad in the mess? No, I know. From the, the fire department perspective, we did uh, 150 calls in 48 hours, which is unprecedented for us. Uh, the amount of damage is now suffered was huge. It wasn't just certain centralized areas in this town. 
and we had like 20, 20 roads blocked on this town at one time. Um, again, I can't say enough about the PPW. Uh, they wanted to help as much as possible. The problem was National Grid couldn't provide personnel that could tell us whether or not the lives that the lines of charge on. So that kind of hampered us a little bit. But all in all, from the end of the storm, Saturday evening around 6 until Tuesday, for a month after, we went to town. So everybody wants to hop on National Grid about not doing the proper response. But when it's, you have one forecast that's wrong and another one comes, and you need the resources for the one that comes instead of the one that's forecasting. You're playing catch up. So everybody just needs to remember that. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a reconnect and, and redistribute the power, like Rick said. Almost everything was in construction with it. Putting in poles, putting in cross numbers, get into the woods, take care of those transmission lines. So if everything's fine here in Pembro, those transmission lines, this grid water and all are, are broken, and they can get them it's still in the power. So that was a, a big huge problem as well. It, it, to make matters worse, the Bradfield telephone exchange went down. Their backup generator didn't work, so 293, 294, and now this row kind of didn't work for three days. Two weeks for five days. And then the brand new generator at the uh, police station died. Um, generator itself was fine, but the gas service, that we have to dig a hole in the street before we do it, to put in a much bigger gas service, one of the valves connected that stopped working the way it was supposed to work, so we had no power in the police station. For about a two hour period of time, uh, we had glow sticks. That's all we had. And, and my officer was using portable radio and cell phones. And that's all we had. We had no telephones, we had no power, we had no lights. So the people at home that were suffering with no power, no lights, were with you. We were there. Uh, so I don't know how many calls we generated, but we probably lost a lot more that, that we were able to get. We're working on making sure we have all these issues taken care of because we have another storm coming. As you know, uh, on that one, one the reverse on the left ball just went out tonight. Parking ban at 11 o'clock tonight, uh, until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So the EPW can do what they have to do. It looks like we may get a significant amount of snow. There will be some wind involved in this fall. Not as, as high as, as the last one, but you know, we're talking anywhere from 35 to 55 miles an hour, coupled with what possibly will be heavy snow. Uh, all the town offices are closed tomorrow. Uh, we really hope that people just stay home. Uh, just for essential workers, stay home because by the end of the day, you're not going to be able to get back. It's, it's going to be bad. We want the EPW to do what they got to do. The trash pickup tomorrow will be scheduled for the following day. The Mill Street uh, pit for dropping off brush now tomorrow. Uh, if there are any kids at home where they have no school and they want to volunteer to show them, uh, look around for your elderly neighbors, confirmed. Maybe go up to the housing complexes. They can always use people uh, that want to volunteer some time. And, and I'm sure uh, Mr. McKinnon will give them a sign off for their school hours. Uh, library will now be open tomorrow. It will be open at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. If you have anybody loses their power, we'll let them in, shout to the phones, warm up. Uh, it just, I can't say it enough. Tomorrow's not a good day to travel. It's not a good day to be out. If you can stay home, stay home. Stay home, stay warm, stay safe. And that will help us do our jobs. Parking van. I already mentioned that once, but again, we're the same. 11 o'clock tonight, off the streets, because the DPW's got to do their job. And, and the quicker they take care of the roads, the better we're all going to be for traveling. So 11 o'clock tonight, 11 o'clock tomorrow night. If, they, if the snow stops early and we get it cleaned up early, we'll take the van off early, but uh, uh, it just makes it so much easier us knocking on the door and having to move the fast. Twenty inches of snow, so that's a pretty big wind row. And probably gonna be a few days before it melts. So if you do have a high in front house, please feel free to shovel out. It's only gonna save us time. Get a couple house fires done on the uh kind of storm island, so it can happen. You know, one of the other things too, the council of aging, they, they reached out to all of their people. All the people they were to find out how they were doing. Uh, I'm sure there's hundreds of people in town that we can check up on, check up on their neighbors. I mean, we're a small community, we can still do that. Uh, it is necessary. It's, it's going to be a, a fairly significant you know, snowstorm. 
Okay. We'll get through it. I mean, it'll be April soon, and we won't be dealing with uh, snow, and we'll probably forget some, but uh, let's just do what we can tomorrow to make it uh, to get through it. I, I would just like to uh, acknowledge uh, our assistant to the town of Minnesota, Superintendent Shokai, for the wonderful job she did during the um, As I uh, heard Michelle say that the I heard you had a sleepover at the uh, library in, uh, between Sabrina and her husband Patrick uh, and the health agent Lisa Kelly. We didn't do anything. Sheila, 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 don't forget Sheila was there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we had, you know, the health agent Sheila Landy, uh, Lisa Kelly, you know, all did a wonderful job in, in uh, helping with the, uh, the new. Uh, our new uh, emergency shelter at the library. That was our first first time we used it. And it worked out good. We had a couple of dogs. We had a bird. Bird. We had fish. We could only the pets at home. So it worked out real well. It was plenty of room. Worked out real well. It was perfect. The setup is this. The layout is perfect for the setup. It really worked out. They understood that the food pantry. There was food. There was food. There was coffee. Items. 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 The Girl Scouts of America donated cookies. Oh, wow. that was pretty good. I wasn't busy driving around. I wouldn't spend some time there. But that was good. It's, it's exactly what it was designed for, and it's what Pima and, and all of the volunteers described as volunteers because so paychecks involved in that. They took care of that. It was nice. It was. All right, thank you for this update. Something did a great job. Parking lot tonight, and tomorrow morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, guys, and everyone else will help. All right, moving on to the board action item. First item on deck: the board has received a recommendation from the former council agent director and the secretary. Voted to approve the approval the approval of 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 the to adopt the amended zero tolerance drug and alcohol testing. Any proposed action? 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 Any proposed the annual town meeting will happen May 12th, the annual town election will take place. What happened in that meeting? Lastly, we'll be going to the executive session. Ed, do we have a meeting for executive session? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move the board goes into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares River Marsh, Water Street, MH 916. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I do All right, so declare River Marsh, Water Street, and also the board will not return to the session. We will actually make it over the contract. Right, so yeah, you can do that and uh, you can vote on yeah. it, and then it will be on next Monday's agenda. You can do that too. All right, we'll let us see what we have. I know. Wait and see. And so we'll be moving to executive session by roll call. Yes. 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 Vote yes as well. Unanimously, we'll see you in a second. 